my mom actually passed away right before I turned 12. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that, so it was just me and my dad for a little bit. I think it definitely kind of, kind of made me grow up faster. Um, I think it definitely kind of hardened me as an individual. Um, yeah. Do you mind if I ask what she passed away from? Yeah, it was a, it was kind of a total fluke. She, she died from a uh, heart attack at 40 years old. Um, other, otherwise healthy person. Um, you know, there, 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 there's some details as to why it happened. Um, but you know, it was just something that nobody saw coming and it was just happened kind of immediately and without warning, okay. which yeah. I also like the, the nature of that, you know, like it'd be different if it was like a long-term illness yeah. or even something like a car accident, yeah. you know, um, it, it really, I think that really kind of puts perspective on how uh, little control we can have about our own lives and futures and the lives of others. You know, so like my mom was 40 years old. I think a lot of people, a lot of people that I know have never like even into fairly deep into adulthood have never really experienced death in a close way. Yeah. So a lot of people just think that like life goes on forever. But I remember like when I was 20 years old, I was like, you know, I bet my mom didn't think that she was halfway done with her life. Mm -mm. So at 12 years old, where was your faith? Um, I think it was, it was very just trying to, I don't think it was my own yet. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like my, my, I think I got most of my ideas from my parents. I've always been like a pretty critical thinker. Um, but yeah, it didn't really, I, I hadn't yet really taken or had the opportunity to super question and critically look at like what I believed. Mm -hmm. Um, or be exposed to competing beliefs <laughs> um, and make a decision that was like totally my own. I think that that came more in uh, the early years of college for me. So basically college, you gave your life to Christ and it's it's been about Christ since. Yeah. So, well, I think what's, what's been another huge part of it too, has just been like, uh, how music has interacted with that because, um, e for a long time, especially in that figuring out phase, I was like kind of making positive music, mm -hmm. but like, I felt like, um, that there was no way to really, I felt like there was no way I could actually succeed in music if I was like just outright Christian. Okay. Yeah. And, and so I was kind of like walking this kind of line where I'd have kind of a foot. I was just like, it was very lukewarm. It was very kind of like, um, just trying to be on both sides of the fence, just straddling. Mm -hmm. And I was, I began to like be in more situations and more and more opportunities where I, it just became clear to me that that straddling was just not good for anybody. Mm -hmm. I was like, look, like I'm not actually going to achieve any type of mainstream success in this kind of inhibited straddling state. Like yeah. if, if I, if I want to be in this crowd with this people, I need to do these drugs and I need to do with these people at these locations. And I'm like, well, that's just, I'm, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. That's not something I'm willing to do. Um, and it's not me. So it was kind of funny. I remember even like this, where I was when I was having this epiphany and this conversation with, with one, some of my friends. And I remember telling them, I'm like, well, you know, 
I guess music will just always kind of just be a hobby for me, but at least like I will feel good about myself yeah. and I won't feel, I won't feel inauthentic or like I compromised what I believe in. Um, and around that time, one of my friends started, uh, he had actually just put me on Andy Minio. Andy Minio had just put out Heroes for Sale. Okay. And I was like really impressed. I was like, whoa, this guy is really talented. And wow, it sounds really good. And wow, these producers are like really going in. Oh, dang, these people are really going crazy. Yeah. So, so it was like, I, I kind of from that it's like i discovered like rapzilla.com and like all these underground artists and not too long after that um i had some friends that were also friends with Derek minor because mm -hmm. we went to the same college in murfreesboro um not too long after that i met no big deal who was at the time doing merch for Derek minor mm -hmm. um and we just connected like he knew who i was from music that i had done on campus and stuff and we were kind of just like the only people that we knew that were like willing to commit a certain level of excellence to music but we're also just like we can be we're, we're just going to be unashamed about what we believe in because actually most of the artists that we knew in college were christians okay but but most of them were just doing this watered down thing yeah. and just kind of tiptoeing the same way. And, and Dill used to do the same thing, you know? So we kind of just met each other at this time. And I just think it's really ironic that it was like after this huge humbling moment that I just desired, decided to like give up a career desire in order to make a particular type of music. Yeah.